All right, so I thought this might be fun for you guys. Back in 2009, I actually at a hobby shop came across this something I've been wanting since I was like 11 or 12 years old, uh, like a little model toy reproduction of the 1950s War of the Worlds Martian machine thing. And I was really, really, you know, it was all put together and he just bought it in a box all complete like this and it came up with a stand. I was really, really excited to get a, a hand or hold of this after wanting something like this for nearly, well, for over 10 years, wait, for 30, no, two, I can th do math, 20 years, for wanting something like this for 20 years, it was fun to finally get a hold of it, and not long after I got a hold of it, it, I wanted to do some photos of it, and it occurred to me, I did an experiment, I was like, well, what if I took a picture of it, and then pulled it out, you know, of the shot, and took a picture of the background, theoretically, one could erase the stand and make it appear like the Martian machine is just hovering over the ground and then in the simple paint program I can add the three um, whatever you want to call it uh, electronic legs and, and the, the orange heat ray. So I basically embarked on a scientific phot phot photographic experiment, if you will, and uh, I just I thought it'd be a kind of a fun video to showcase the or to show you the the steps, the photographic steps that I went through to make this particular still image that you see here. So the first order of business, of course, is to set up the Martian war machine and take a picture of the Martian war machine like that. So here it is. This is the photo just in reality as uh, completely untouched and just as it exists in real life with the the model with the stand that it came with. The next order of business of course is to take a picture of that same background removing the model so that way you can go into the picture with the model and remove the stand that the model is is resting on or the stand that's holding the model up. Now that we got the actual shot of the model and then a shot of the background plate without the model, we can now proceed to go into the shot of the model and erase in that photo what we don't want to appear in the finished photo, which in this case is the model stand holding the model up. So once we get rid of that, you take the photograph of the background with no model in it and then you overlay this photo of the model over that background photo. This photo, of course, no longer having the bits that we don't want to appear in the final photo. And voila! You now have a shot of the Martian war machine basically just hovering seamlessly. The only problem with this finished photo is a discerning eye can catch a glimpse of the reflection of the model stand on the bottom of the actual war machine model itself, in upcoming photos I actually alleviate that problem. So once my theory of combining images minus the stand seemed to work, I thought well I could take this photo one step closer and make it maybe a little cooler. So as you saw at the beginning of the video, to, for the final touches I did this and added just in a simple paint program the three electronic legs and the as I said, orange heat ray, and you have your basically Martian war machine model in a setting that looks pretty cool and realistic. I decided to do another photo, um, this time not showing the bottom so you can't see the reflection of the stand once we remove the stand from the photo. Also doing a photo that has the war machine more front and center and has a blurred background to basically emphasize even more the war machine itself and also with our new special effect technique it'll showcase the fact that you no know, strings can be seen in the final photo once we're done just like before after you take a picture of the war machine in the shot you remove the war machine from the shot and just take a picture of the background area with no war machine in it then you go in and remove the bits once again that you don't want. In this case it doesn't matter if I do it rather sloppily. As you can see there's a big swoosh kind of a thing here because I'm just doing it sloppily. It'll, it doesn't really matter in this particular case how sloppily I remove the stand because as you'll see coming up 
once you overlay the two images, this shot looks absolutely amazing. This is my, uh, I did three different photo shoots of the Martian War Machine, the third of which I'll show you after this one. But of all three, this is my favorite just because it's just so shiny and so front and center and so cool with the background blurred out. And as much as a discerning eye might want to look for trickery or strings or some kind of way of how this was done, you'll never, never, never find it. And it's just so cool. And I decided that this one will just leave without the, the heat ray and the three little tripod electronic tripod legs, if you will. I just thought this one looked just so cool, just with no ray and with no tripod legs. Just, I love the green, you know, woods and the green grass weeds <laughs> kind of ground. And just, as I said, the front and center focus, shiny ass war machine, just, to me, this photo is just really cool. So after those two tests worked amazingly well, I decided to do something a little more ambitious and I uh, actually got a little toy Jeep there, Army Jeep, which you can see there. And I decided, well, there's really no reason, since I'm doing this, this imagery trickery, I can basically, there's no real reason why I only need to have one Martian machine. I could have two or three. Um, I could have as many Martian machines in a shot that I want by simply layering shots over themselves. So I, I decided, I, I should have done three, but I was kind of lazy, so I just did two. But I decided to do a shot where there's two marsh, you know, using one model, I could do a finished shot that has two Martian war machines in it, basically approaching an army jeep. So this is one of the actual photos of just things as they exist in real life with the stand in it there. Then I basically, instead of removing the Martian War Machine, I basically just moved it back, making sure to keep, obviously, the camera on the tripod and not move the camera. And also, as you can possibly see here, not changing the focal setting either. Focus, when I move the more, since I focused uh, the first picture, I focused on the War Machine when it was closer to the Jeep. I made sense that, you know, when I move this War Machine further back, it's, it goes slightly out of focus. Well, you can't focus it because that would not be consistent with, you know, the imagery, the finished the finished image. You have to stay consistent with the focal, you know, the focal whatever, focus of the shots, you know, as if this is all being done in one picture. And then just like before, you remove the Martian War Machine completely and just do a, you know, more or less quote-unquote background plate. But in this plate, you can also, you can leave the Jeep there because, well, he's part of the background plate, I guess, even though technically in the finished film, the Jeep is in the foreground. But you get what I'm saying. And just like with before, now that you've got your background plate, you go into your shots of the war machine and you remove the stands from the pictures, the things that you don't want in the pictures. You do this with this one and then the same Thing with the other war machine, the one we took a picture of first that was more prominently featured in focus in the foreground. After we add the picture of the back one without the stand here, we're beginning to see the photo come together, although it looks rather incomplete with just this one Martian war machine slightly out of focus there. This is not obviously how the complete photo is intended to look. Obviously it looks a lot better after we add the other one and as i said because of the movie you know and the martians doing things in threes and the ships are basically do their destroying by threes obviously technically there should be a third one in the background as well but i was just too lazy i wanted to see how two of them worked out and i think by the time i got done with this i was like ah screw it this thing works you know this technique works uh, i'm too lazy to do a photo with all three of them in although it'd be cool if there was one in the background, you know, on the other side of the one that's prominently featured in focus in the foreground, but alas, I was too lazy to do that. And since the method of using one war machine to end up looking like two in the single picture worked out, I thought I'd take it a little further in the paint program and just add a little heat ray there. And then since I did that, I figured why not really jazz it up and add another heat ray to the machine behind it. But as you can see, since the machine behind it's kind of, kind of out of focus, the heat ray should be as well, which I couldn't really do in the simple paint program. But uh, that's pretty much my uh, three photo experiment with, uh, you know, making the Martian war machine appear to be, to be hovering. Obviously, my theory of 
will it work if I take two pictures, one with the machine in it and one without, and then in the picture with the machine, erase the stand and combine, you know, overlap the pictures. Um, you know, obviously the theory should be that it looked really cool, and that's what ended up happening. So that was pretty much my little bit of uh, Martian war machine photography using a little cool, uh, you know, already completed and assembled and painted Martian war machine model kit thing that I got in 2000. Nine from a hobby store. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video and catch you next time.